Uh, thank you, Matthew. So yes, as Matthew said, today I'll be speaking about Meta-Fibonacci recurrences and, or specifically, uh, linear recurrence solutions to Meta-Fibonacci recurrences. First, I'm going to remind you what Fibonacci numbers are because A, they're going to be what the rest of this talk is related to in some way, and B, hopefully you all will know what Fibonacci numbers are, but they will come up later. So just, so Fibonacci numbers. So, F1 is 1, F2 is 1, and then for n greater than 2, Fn is equal to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2. So I'm not going to list out a bunch of terms here because you hopefully have all seen these before. But I'll give you an OAIS reference. This is sequence number 45 in OAIS. So this sequence has been known for quite a long time. I think Fibonacci was in like the 12 or 1300s. But then in 1963, uh, Douglas Hofstadter came along. And he decided to put a variation on this. And he called he used Q to denote the sequence, so I'm going to follow in his footsteps and use Q to denote his sequence. So and Fibonacci numbers I use in subscripts. For all these other things, I'm going to use them like their functions. So Q of 1 is equal to 1, and Q of 2 is equal to 1. So that's the same as the Fibonacci. But then the recurrence is different. So Q of n is Q of n minus Q of n minus 1 plus Q of n minus Q of n minus 2. So with Fibonacci numbers, you always just go back 1 and you go back 2. Whereas here, the previous term and the term before tell you how far back you're going. So this is why um, Hofstetter referred to this as a meta-Fibonacci recurrence. And um, in fact, Douglas Hofstetter was here. He gave a talk on this recurrence in April 2014. But don't worry, this is not going to be a repeat of his talk. But so. So let's calculate a few terms of that sequence. So the first term is 1, and the second term is 1. So now Q of 3. Well, that's uh, Q of 3 minus Q of 2 plus Q of 3 minus Q of 1. Well, Q of 2 is 1. Q of 1 is also 1. So this is q of 2 plus q of 2. And q of 2 was 1, so this is 2. So the second term is 2, or the third term is 2. And then let's also do q of 4. That's q of 4 minus q of 3 plus q of 4 minus q of 2. Now q of 3 is 2, we just computed that. Now this is going to be q of 2 plus q of 3, because q of 2 is 1. So that's three. And I'll list a few more terms here. So it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 5. So, so far, so good. So far, it looks like it's going to be a very nice little. And then a few 6's. 6, 6, 6. 8, 8, 8, 10, 9, 10. I'll stop there. I just wanted to get. I just. So, this second sequence you're working on, that's not linearly recursive? No. The, the linear recursive stuff is going to come up later. I mean, it's not linear recursive. But this is not linear recursive, and I just wanted to get to a point where this was no longer a monotone. So, it starts out looking like it might behave nicely. Then it does something like this. And then if you list out even more terms, it just gets really awful. So this is if you want to look at more terms of the sequence. Okay, I'll give you an OAS reference. This is sequence number 5185. And as simple, 
I wouldn't necessarily call this recurrence simple, but it's as simple as that of the Menachi recurrence is calm. Very little is actually known about this sequence. The most pressing question is, we don't even know that this sequence is modified. So this is an open question, which I am not going to present a solution to today. Well, actually, in a sense, I will present a solution to it today, but it'll be in a trivial sense. So well, why might this not be defined? Yeah. Well, notice this. You're evaluating within each guy. So what happens if Q of some K is greater than K? That could conceivably happen. You could have two terms that are maybe each like K over 2 plus 1. So you add them up, you get k plus 2. Well, then what's q of k plus 1? Well, q of k plus 1, this would be q of k plus 1 minus q of k plus q of k plus 1 minus q of k minus 1. Don't really care about this term, but let's look at this term. Well, q of k is greater than k. So this is greater than or equal to k plus 1. So this is less than or equal to 0. But our initial conditions are q of 1 and q of 2. So the q is not defined for anything less than 1. So this, this is undefined. So that means that q of k plus 1 would be undefined. So empirically, it appears that this does not happen. In fact, it appears to be very far from happening. It doesn't even seem to ever get close to being greater than n, except right here, where it's equal to n. But we have no proof, or no even partial proof, that this is the case. We just have evidence that it probably is the case that it lasts for a while. We know, we know it, the first 10 to the 10 terms. But then there's another question of, well, let's say a condition on it exists. What can we say about it's the growth rate of the sequence? And the answer is we don't know whether this exists or not, even if we assume that that exists. But we know that if this exists, it's out. state of affairs with Hofstetter Q sequence. There's another sequence that Hofstetter was studying, and this is sometimes, this is known by various names. I'm going to call it the Hofstetter-Conway sequence. So this is, I'm going to use A for the, for this, for this regards. So it's a of 1 equals 1, a of 2 equals 1. But then the recurrence is a of n is equal to a of a of n minus 1 plus a of n minus a of n minus 1. So this was a sequence that Hofstetter came up with around the same time he came up with the Q sequence. And here I'll just list a few terms. I'm not going to go through calculating them. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, not 77. And I feel like I can stop here because this one actually is nicely behaved in a sense. And this is sequence 4001 in OAIS. So unlike that sequence where we know almost nothing, this sequence, we actually know quite a bit, but it took a while to know that. So it's fairly easy to show that the difference between successive terms is either 0 or 1 in this sequence. And 
and that can just be proved by induction. So this is from the 60s that Hofstadter proposed this. In the 80s, Conway got to studying it. And he was able to show that this limit is equal to a half. But he had no clue about the rate of convergence. So being, being, being Conway, he proposed a, I, some, I think the OEIS entry has it listed as $10,000. But other sources have it listed as 1,000, and I think more people said 1,000 than 10,000. So I'm going to go with the offered a $1,000 prize. So he offered a $1,000 prize for finding with proof the, the, la the last n such that. This difference exceeds 120. Why 1 over 20? Because it kind of just picked a number. Oh. And I mean, he was just convinced that even this was hopeless. But within just about, like, I think this was around 85. And then in 1991, Colin Mallows of Bell Labs claimed this prize. He was able to calculate this n. And unfortunately, I don't know off the top of my head what this n is, but he found it. And he was able to actually find a way to calculate this term very efficiently, this sequence efficiently. So he, he found a very nice structure in this sequence. And he, had, he used a lot of experimental techniques in doing that, where he took the sequence, applied various transformations to it until something nice happened, and then he proved that the something nice continued. So as we've seen here, these meta Fibonacci recurrences, they can either cause chaos or they can cause seeming order, or seeming chaos that is actually order. Neither of these is really what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about things that look ordered to begin with. So before we actually get into some of those, I'm just going to say a couple things that are going to hold true for the rest of the talk. First of all is a convention that we're going to use. So, so as I said earlier, this is the big open question with the, Q, with the Q sequence. And I said that I would solve it in a trivial way. So here's how we're going to do that. So the convention is going to be that for any meta Fibonacci sequence, Now here I'm using Q to denote just an arbitrary meta Fibonacci sequence, not necessarily Hofstadter's recurrence. Q of n equals zero if n is less than equal to zero. And this may seem like cheating, but I'm not the first one to do this. Other authors have done this. And a lot of the solutions we're going to talk about behave super linearly. The only way that can happen is if you enforce this condition. And so without this convention, at least half of this talk breaks down. What are the other meta sequences? I'm going to talk about them in a bit. For, for most of this talk, we'll be focusing on the Hofstadter recurrence. But you can generalize it by either like you can add Q of n minus Q of n minus 3 if you want. You can change the, the minuses to other things. You can put coefficients in front of stuff. There's lots of ways you can vary that. And I will mention that, but I'm not going to mention that right now. So this convention we're going to use, and then also Another thing is we're only going to talk about what I'm going to call explicit solutions. Meaning that all our solutions, we're going to be able to calculate the next term just by looking at the previous terms. An example of a solution that is not an explicit solution would be the all zero sequence to the offset of recurrence. Because the all zero sequence satisfies that recurrence, but you can't use it to calculate the next term.
And in particular, this means that our sequences are going to be eventually positive. So they, they might have some negative initial conditions, but they will be positive eventually. So this is the state of affairs with these sort of slow growing or chaotically growing sequences. So then around 1990, uh, Solomon Golem took the Hofstetter Q recurrence and gave it a different initial condition. Well, what happens if we make q of 1 equals 3, q of 2 equals 2, and q of 3 equals 1? Well, the sequence starts 3, 2, 1. So then the next term, so the fourth term, so q of 4, follow that recurrence, is q of 4 minus q of 3, so that's q of so q of 4 minus 1, so it'll be q of 3, that'll give us a 1. And then plus q of 4 minus q of 2, so that'll give us a 2. We add those together, we get a 3 here. And then the next term is going to be q of 5 minus 3, which is 2, plus q of 5 minus 1, which is 3. So this will be 5. And then I'm just going to write down some more terms. So the term after the 5 is a 4. Then 3, 8, 7, 3, 11, 10, 3, 14, 13, and so on. This is sequence A, 2, 4, 4, 4, 7, 7 in OEIS. Does anyone see a pattern? Yeah. Yeah, so um, this sequence actually has, is what's, it's what's known as quasi linear, meaning that each you can, you can break it down into a function that depends on the congruence class of the argument, and each of the congruence classes is a linear function. So, q of 3n is 3n minus 2, q of 3n plus 1 is 3, q of 3n plus 2 is 3n plus 2. And I, and I want to thank Neil Sloan for having the, uh, on the OAIS, there's a reference for this. There's lots of papers cite this result. They all cite it as unpublished note by Golem in 1990 or 1991. But Sloan got, like, I could not find this note anywhere. But Sloan managed to get his hands on it, and it's on the OAIS. So if you look at, if you look at this sequence's entry, you can find this unpublished note from Golem where he talks about this sequence. He also talks about the Conway sequence and some other things. So just to give, just because the, the ideas will be important going forward, I'm actually going to go through proving this, or at least part of this, just so we can see sort of what sort of things come up. So all the proofs of things like this will be, will be by induction. And I'm going to leave out the base case because you can just see that it's satisfied. So just try each case of, of the congruence class. Well, q of 3n, that's going to be q of 3n minus q of 3n minus 1, plus q of 3n minus q of 3n minus 2. Well, q of 3n minus 1, that falls here, but n is n minus 1, so you're going to get 3n minus 1 for that. This is q of 3n minus 3n minus 1. And then here we just get the 3, so q of 3n minus 3. So now the three ends here cancel out. So this is just q of 1. And then this is q of 3n minus 3. So notice that 3n minus 3 is in the same congruence class as 3n. It's just one term before it in there. So instead of 3n minus 2, it'll be 3n minus 5. And then q of 1 is an absolute constant. q of 1 is 3. So this is 3 plus 3n minus 5 
and that's 3n minus 2. And then the other two cases are similar to that, where in the, if you plug in a linear guy, it'll cancel the thing out, and you just get an absolute constant here. And if you plug in a constant guy, you get something previous in the sequence. All right, I think I'm not going to use that half of the board because I don't know that people will be able to see that very well. So this is our first example. This sequence is a linear recurrent sequence because it's each, each of the component sequences is linear recurrent, and then if you do this operation with linear recurrent sequences, you get another linear recurrent sequence. So this one is quasi-linear. And notice we didn't, we didn't use this convention here. But now we're going to do another, another one where we are going to use the convention. So this is a, from 2011. Uh, this is uh, Frank Rusky in a paper of his. Also using the Hofstadter key recurrence with a different initial condition. So his initial condition, q of 1 is 3, q of 2 is 6, q of 3 is 5, q of 4 is 3, q of 5 is 6, and q of 6 is 8. I believe he actually started with 0, but it doesn't, you can shift these things over arbitrarily, so I'm starting from 1, because I don't want to have to change my notation halfway through the top. So let's see what happens with this. So this sequence starts uh, 3, 6, 5, 3, 6, 8. So now the next term, this is the seventh term. So, but we get 7 minus 8. And by our convention, that's just 0. And then 7 minus 6 is 1. So we get 3. And then the next term, we're going to get the 6 over here. Or 8 minus, or we'll get this 6 here. But then this next term, it's going to be 9 minus 6, so, the, so we're going to get a 5, and then 9 minus 3, we're going to get an 8. And 5 plus 8 is 13. And then the next terms are 3, 6, 21, 3, 6, 34, 3, 6, 55, and so on. So does anyone see a pattern here? Yeah, so the, here's the, the Fibonacci numbers are showing up. So we started with this meta Fibonacci recurrence, and we got the regular Fibonacci numbers, albeit with these threes and sixes, and we had to start from five. But notwithstanding those facts, the Fibonacci numbers are appearing. So this is sequence. Uh, write it down here. Here's the check here. One eight eight six seven zero. And the formula here, so q of 3n is f sub n plus 4, q of 3n plus 1 is 3, and q of 3n plus 2 is 6. So these are what are called interlacings of uh, recurrent sequences, where in your case, two of them are just constant uh, mm -hmm. sequences. So this is a class that's been studied by various people. Right, and this, that, this is the type of thing that's going to show up, and that's the type of thing we're, we're going to generalize after this. So, again, I'm going, to, I'm going to go through proving two of those cases just to show you two other nuances that can happen. I'll leave that up. Leave that. So, again, the proofs by induction, I'm going to leave out the base case. So q of 3n, that's q of 3n minus q of 3n minus 1, plus q of 3n minus q of 3n minus 2. So this time, q of 3n minus 1, that's just 6, and q of 3n minus 2 is 3. This is q of 3n minus 6, plus q of 3n minus 3. So now notice that both of these guys are in the same congruence class as this guy. So these are both Fibonacci numbers. So this guy, this goes two back. So this is f of n plus 2. And then this goes one back. So this is f of n plus 3. So then, by both Fibonacci <coughs> numbers, that's f of n plus 1. And then, 3n plus 1, 
That's Q of 3n plus 1 minus Q of 3n plus Q of 3n plus 1 minus Q of 3n minus 1. So this is Q of 3n plus 1 minus Fn plus 4 plus Q of 3n plus 1 minus 3. Or that was a 6, isn't it? So let's look at this guy. There's a fact that Fn plus 4 is greater than or equal to 3n plus 1 for n greater than or equal to 1. So this is just 0. And this is 3n minus 5. And that's equal to 3. And then the last case is similar. So we've seen that in the context of these interlacings of of these linear recurrent sequences, you can have situations where you refer to your own congruence class once, or you refer to something that, or you, you could refer to your own congruence class twice, or you can refer to another congruence class that co that's always going to exceed you. So you can refer to you can refer to something that actually grows faster than a slide of slope one. So those are the three main behaviors that we've seen. So now let's try to generalize uh, the, this Golomb case and this Rusty case. So what sort of generalizations can we make? Recurrences. So, so the general recurrence, I'm still going to use the name Q because that's used frequently in literature, so don't let it confuse you. But if, I, if I'm using the Hofstetter Q, I'll specifically say that it's the Hofstetter Q. So the general recurrence is just going to have the form Q of n is equal to some constant, which I'll call it k plus a sum of ci q of n minus, I'm going to put another parameter in here, and then these I'm going to call ri. So there's a bunch of parameters. So k is a parameter, n is a parameter, and then the ci's, ti's, and ri's are parameters. So in the case of Hofstetter, this is 0, this is 2, these are both 1, these are both 0, one of these is 1, one of these is 2. So now, we're going to try to experimentally find more solutions that look sort of like this to various recurrences of this form. So first of all, these are both period 3 type things we can change the 3 to be something else. So we're going to call it M. So we're going to look at pieces of the form Q of Mn plus K, where K is going to range from 0 to, M to, to M minus 1. 